In this video, we are going to find the Galois group of the polynomial x to the fourth minus 20x squared plus 80. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the roots of this polynomial. And this is a uh, quadratic polynomial in x squared. So if you think of x squared as being your variable, you can um, determine the value of x squared using the quadratic formula. So we're going to do that. We get x squared is equal to the following. So we have 20 plus or minus, and then this will be 400 minus 320 divided by 2. So again, this is just using the quadratic formula to uh, find the value of x squared, uh, assuming that x is a root of the polynomial, right? And so this gives us that x squared is equal to 10 plus or minus. Um, and then if you simplify this down, you get uh, 2 squared root of 5. Okay, so these are the two possible values for x squared. And these are both uh, non-negative numbers. So the possible values for x are plus or minus square root of 10 plus or minus 2 square root of 5. So this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, this is all four of the roots of this polynomial. Um, so based on that, we actually already know or we can already find out what the splitting field of this polynomial is, which we'll just call k. And I'll just write this as q adjoin alpha beta. And alpha refers to 10 plus 2 square root of 5, the square root of that. And then beta refers to square root of 10 minus 2 square root of uh, 5. Right, so as long as you adjoin uh, these two numbers to q, you automatically get their negatives, and so you get all of the roots of f of x. Okay, so this is the splitting field of the polynomial. Okay, but so now we want to figure out what the Galois group of this polynomial is. Um, and to do that, uh, we first want to make uh, a couple observations. So one thing that we can observe about f of x is that it is an irreducible polynomial. Okay, and one way we can see that is using Eisenstein's criterion. Um, so if we use Eisenstein's criterion with p equal to 5, right, you can see that uh, p does not divide the leading coefficient of f. It does divide both of these coefficients. And then you can see that p squared doesn't divide 80. Right, so those are all of the conditions that have to be met for uh, f to be irreducible using Eisenstein's criterion. So what that means, for example, is that the minimal polynomial for alpha over q, which I'll write like this, so this actually is f of x. Right, because f of x has alpha as a root, and f of x is irreducible. And so what that tells you is that, for example, uh, the degree of this extension, so the, the degree of uh, k over q, this extension, is uh, at least 4. Right, because if you just adjoined alpha to q, the degree of that extension would be 4, because f of x has degree 4. And we're not just adjoining alpha, we're adjoining beta as well, and so we get something that has degree at least equal to 4. Great, but now uh, we also want to know uh, more about the possible elements of the Galois group. So we're going to um, try to figure that out. Um, so the first thing that we uh, notice is that if we have some kind of, um, if we have an automorphism phi from k to k, so basically just an element of the Galois group, 
um, we kind of have this special property with these particular numbers that um, phi of alpha is, sorry, phi of uh, negative alpha is negative phi of alpha, and that uh, phi of negative beta is negative phi of beta. Um, so this would actually be true for any automorphism uh, because it's linear with respect to multiplication. Uh, but what's special in this case is that the roots of the polynomial are plus or minus alpha and plus or minus beta. So this means that if we have an element of the Galois group, it's kind of determined by just where it sends alpha and just where it sends beta um, for this reason, right? Because wherever um, phi basically sends alpha and wherever it sends beta, the uh, numbers that it sends negative alpha and negative beta to are automatically determined just by that information. So using that, it's actually pretty easy to figure out what the potential elements of the Galois group are. Um, and doing that, I'll just um, kind of create this table here. Um, because really all that matters, again, is where do you send alpha and where do you send beta? And we know that uh, alpha and beta have to both be sent to uh, roots of f of x, uh, because that's always true for elements of the Galois group. They always permute the uh, roots of the polynomial. So these are basically the possibilities. I can send alpha to alpha and beta to beta. That's kind of the obvious one. Um, but you know, there's other possibilities. I can send alpha to beta beta to negative alpha. I can send alpha to negative alpha, beta to negative beta. I could send alpha to negative beta, beta to alpha. Right, and so basically I can just keep filling this out. Um, these are all of the possible places that I could send alpha and beta. And again, once I know these, I know basically what the automorphism is. And so far, we don't necessarily know that all of these determine automorphisms, but we're going to sort of narrow it down from here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is basically just label these, right? So I'll label this one E for identity. Uh, this one I'll call sigma. Um, and I'm sort of, you know, cheating because I already know what the Galois group is, so that affects how I'm labeling these automorphisms, but it'll be clear why in a minute. Um, I'll call this sigma squared, uh, sigma cubed, I'll call this tau, sigma tau, sigma squared tau, sigma cubed tau. Right, and so you can check that these names kind of make sense, right? So like the, the automorphism that I called sigma, right? I know that uh, sigma sends sigma sends alpha to beta. Uh, and then I know that um, if I apply sigma again, that this goes to negative alpha. And so this is consistent with how I labeled this chart, right? That sigma squared of alpha is equal to negative alpha. Right, and so you can check that these kind of obey the rules of composition in the way that you would expect them to. Um, but what this uh, table really is, is this is just D4. Right, so this is um, the dihedral group with eight elements. Um, and it has one element of order four, which is sigma, and then it has another element uh, of order two, which is tau. And the sigma and the tau kind of multiply with each other in, in a specific way. So basically what we're kind of figuring out from this table is that uh, because of the way that the roots of this particular polynomial work um, and the fact that uh, one of the roots is alpha, one of the roots is negative alpha, one of the roots is beta, one of them is negative beta. And so it kind of forces the possible automorphisms to just be the elements of D4. 
So, but now, again, we don't know a priori that uh, each one of these is actually an automorphism. And uh, so now we need to use kind of a trick to uh, figure out uh, which of them are actually elements of the Galois group. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, and to do that, we are going to consider this element. So this is alpha beta, alpha squared minus beta squared. Um, okay, and you can check this. So you can check that alpha beta, so this is equal to this. And this is the same as the square root of uh, here I have 100, and then here I have minus uh, 20. So this is square root of 80, which is 4 square root of 5. And then you can check, um, if you want, that alpha squared minus beta squared is also equal to 4 square root of 5. So this is actually equal to 80. Um, and so why do I want to consider this element? Um, it's basically because this is an element of Q, right? So if um, an element from this table is actually an automorphism, basically it has to fix uh, this element because it's an element of Q. So again, this se might seem kind of random, like why did I pick this? It's basically just because this is uh, one of the easiest ways to produce a number that's just an element of Q and just by like multiplying and adding powers of alpha and beta, right? And so this is what we want to use. Um, and we want to notice that, for example, uh, the element tau, so what does tau do to this element? Just to use this as, uh, as an example, well, so tau sends alpha to beta and beta to alpha. So the alpha beta here is not really going to change. Um, but the thing on the inside is going to change, right? Because I know that alpha goes to beta. Um, so alpha squared is actually going to turn into beta squared. And then this is going to be alpha squared. Right, so this is actually equal to negative 80. And so what that shows me is that um, this element tau that we thought was potentially an element of the Galois group, this actually isn't an element of the Galois group because it doesn't fix this number, which is a rational number. Um, so we know that tau isn't, if we just call the Galois group G, we know tau isn't an element of G because it's not actually an automorphism. Um, and similarly, you can check um, sigma tau, all the powers of sigma times tau. So none of these are actually elements of G. And you can tell this by doing the same argument. You just plug in this number. And you see that um, it is not fixed under any of these maps. Right, And so what this tells us is that none of these are elements of the Galois group. Um, but before, remember we um, had this fact from earlier that the degree of this extension was at least 4. Um, and so that kind of forces the remaining elements from my table Right, all of these remaining elements do have to be elements of, um, of G. Right, because we know that the degree of this extension is at least 4. And so we know that the size of G is at least 4. And when we wrote down all of our possible elements for G, right, so these were all the possible elements for uh, G that we had earlier. And basically, we figured out that four of these can't be elements of G. 
And so the fact that G has order at least equal to four uh, basically just forces these remaining elements to be the elements of G. So that's great because it shows that G is actually just uh, Z mod 4Z. Right, because it just consists of um, the identity, uh, this um, permutation sigma, um, and then the powers of sigma. And um, yeah, that's it.